Welcome to the Drew Gooden episode of the Hoop Theory Podcast, aka episode 90, which is in honor of him being the best player to ever wear the jersey number 90. Recording this one on the evening of Friday, June 21st, my name is Logan Wortman, and as usual, I'm joined by my world champion co-host, Jacob Roth. Jacob, how does it feel to be on the Drew Gooden episode? Feels good. Uh, I also didn't think basketball right away when you said Drew Gooden. There's that like reaction YouTube guy that Mm -hmm. I think is pretty prominent. Mm-hmm. Maybe not Very to everybody. Common. Definitely is to me. I definitely like. No, yeah, he has like five million followers, yeah, that's, that, subscribers. That, that's on pretty substantial. Uh, yeah. But yeah, world champs got it done. i like, I'm glad we waited a couple days to do this because it would have been pretty unbearable. Um, but unbearable for who? For the, the listeners? No, for us to get through because I would have just been so rambly and <laughs> incoherently happy. It just would not have been mm-hmm. as good content wise. Um, yeah. And we've also, it's good we've waited because there's been like kind of a sneaky amount of early off season news that's taking place. Yeah. Like the ball's really been rolling pretty quickly. Um, But we got it done. Banner 18 is going to be in the Raptors, which is awesome. Um, mm-hmm. I'd like to think that this team could at least get 19. I'm going to be optimistic and say this team will get us to 20. This, this core of guys. Oh, yeah. um, just because of. The youth and I think Missoula's gave it given himself a a lot of like if there's a couple years where there's a little bit of disappointment, Missoula has earned enough that he'll be kept around. There won't be a a get a coach change because we need one. He's gotten it done. He got the the monkey off the back. Banner eighteen is done. Um, shout out to uh, I think honestly I don't know if I ever thought I would have said this Draymond Green. Okay. For uh, I don't know if you've seen this on his podcast after the fact. He's like, if you can't respect the fact that the Celtics like called their shot of like we're getting Banner eighteen, stop us, we're doing it, and then they like followed through with it. He's like, usually you keep your goals when you're a professional sports team. You keep it behind door. You don't bring it up. Like obviously, you're, everybody's trying to win the championship, but nobody's ever like that v- upfront and vocal about what their direct goal is. Hmm. It's you know, it's a very interesting clip. Anyway, he says if you can't respect the fact that they did that, then I don't know if I can respect that you true? or your opinion. That what the team teams don't usually say out loud or say to the public that they their goal is to win the championship. No, I think that it, it was weirded worldly, w- weirded, worded weirdly, <laughs> worded weirdly. Yeah, like in the way that he said it. But I think the point was like usually, like obviously, everyone's trying to win the championship, so it doesn't get said like like a rallying cry after like a 10 game win streak onto banner 18. Yeah. It's not like that in the forefront of everything. Maybe it Obviously, wasn't Maybe it wasn't normal for last year either, but Mike Malone before the season even started was saying that like very it was it felt like almost every other game afterwards would be like we're going to win a championship this year. Like we're on a championship, you know, trajectory. Like that was like the the vision the whole time. Um, yeah. But that also Mike Malone just seems like he's the type of guy to be bold Say that. like that, yeah. you know, so that's probably not super common. But yeah, like that on, is on 2K. He's p- picking high expect. Oh, that might be NCAA football 14 that had that. You can select your expectations for the next year. And he's just always oh. doing super aggressive. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's definitely NCAA football because there's a chance you get fired if you don't reach them. Mm-hmm. And so like. It's like, oh, I'm three and nine Nebraska. Next year, I'm winning a championship. Hyper aggressive. <laughs> anyway, that's an unrelated topic, and we got a lot of actual good stuff to get to. So staying on track, um, I was super pumped. I was like seeing Al finally oh, get yeah. over the hill. For sure. Um, and never have to be on a list with Carl Malone again. Keep Al Horford away from Carl Malone on every list ever. Uh-huh. Like, what the... <laughs> Could you imagine two polar opposite people and how they're regarded by the human race? That's true. That's very true. I'm convinced that Al Horford, like someone will open like a charity and then name it after Al Horford because he's just that good of a guy. Mm-hmm. Also, apparently he's not done. Did he say uh, Did he say that? Has he announced that? Wick, 
uh, Wick said it, the president, yeah. whatever of the Celtics. I don't know what his technical title he, is. Isn't he one of the owners? I think he is an owner, but he also has like other Titles. things. Yeah. Governor, maybe? Go- Isn't that that's, a thing? That's just the new name of the owners in the NBA. They changed that after okay. Donald Sterling, but people don't really use it that often. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but Wick Grusbeck, I think it Grus Bruce, Bruce oh, yeah. Beck. Uh-huh. I know who you're talking about. Wick G. I, yeah. Anyway, uh, he said, well, from what I've, I've heard, Al's coming back. And then Celtics Twitter was carefully looking at Al's, like, celebration post. And I'm pretty sure he accidentally just clicked the trophy one too many times. There's 19 trophies in his tweet instead of 18. Mm. I'm almost positive when you're counting that high. You just accidentally added one too many. Mm-hmm. But it would be awesome to have Al back, even if it's as in a more like reserved role that like still plays, obviously, if he still has it, because he does. Um, but like a Udonis Haslam type of like just like a presence, because I think that is valuable to the team. Uh Derek Weiss tooth. Shout out to him <laughs> and his tooth as he was getting it done. And I'm glad they won the way they did, where like the defense, they like turned Luca. I don't say they turned Luca off. They did what they did to Luca in game one again, where it's like, you can score 30 if you want to, guy, but you're not going to be able to get your teammates involved mm-hmm. at all. Like, we're not going to let it happen. And I'm glad they they came back with that tenacity and they fought like that again. Just just gave them the nice gentleman sweep and they were out the door. Also, I'm hoping that this is the death of the stupid, like Kyrie stuff and like <laughs> sorry or F Kyrie whatever it gets chanted in Boston or Kyrie sucks or booing every time he touches the ball let's just get over it can we just be done and move on Kyrie's like openly well he's played both sides but whatever like in the during the finals presser he's like well I mean I just wasn't in the right headspace before the game started when I went to Boston and now I'm I've got myself I'm more established as a human uh, I made mistakes when I was there. No, no love lo- or no hate for Boston, whatever. And then after game uh, three, he was like, "Well, if you're gonna go to Boston, be ready to be joining a cult because you need to be ready for that." I paraphrased. He's like, "Make sure you know what you're getting into before you go play for the Celtics." Oh. He just like pivoted hard, and I was like, "I feel like everybody kind of knows what you're getting into, but maybe not." Yeah, well, maybe not to the extent, but like, I feel like you would know that it's like a different amount of pressure and like a different yeah, for sure presence and like the whole like ghost like there's like literal just eight eighteen years now just looming above you constantly with like a lot of all time greats just the ghosts of the all time greats just hanging there mm-hmm. that you have to like think about constantly and the pressure and anyway. Don't want to. Turn, this is Celtics corner, not Kyrie corner. I just hope we can be done with that. That would be great for me because I don't. I'm. I don't get it. I was happy he was no longer on the team, but I do not hold resentment to Kyrie Irving. Really, yeah. But I would like so for you that don't to like, be done. You don't like that energy being focused on him when we're chant when like stupid people are chanting Kyrie sucks or f Kyrie at our championship parade. It does irritate me. That's stupid. It's our effing parade. Yeah. There's so many great things we could celebrate. Uh huh. Why? Why do we care? Why? <laughs> yeah. And it, also, who's like a who's the Nuggets famous fan? Who is the the fan? Do the Nuggets have one? I mean, there's I don't there's not like one I don't think, but there's a few that one, I could. One of the Celtics famous fan. Fan people, yeah, is Dave Portnoy, Barstool's uh, he, owner. He's from. And he, oh yeah, yeah, I knew that. I knew that. Mm-hmm. He's from rich people, Boston, like North. Yeah, what, for some reason, for some reason, I was thinking he was New York, but no, he's definitely. Boston. He's like Boston, yeah. everything, and mm-hmm. then Michigan for sports. And I'm not big on the whole Dave Portnoy's college, got a lot of flack for yeah for college. Um, Dave Portnoy's got a lot of flack for a bunch of stupid things that I don't think are worth giving him flack for in his yeah. pro- that's not but this one thing i'm like just stop it doesn't matter we're at our parade so he was doing that he was doing the Kyrie yes, stuff yes he was oh, like okay. leading it in one of the duck boats 
Yeah. Which it's it's whatever. I'm I'm glad that like there's like a prominent fan that cares about my team that I can like Oh yeah, that look at that famous person that cares about my team. You know that that's nice to have. Yeah, you get you have lots of those though. But no, like Nebraska doesn't have that. It's Larry the Cable Guy and Will I was Compton. Say, yeah, we have we have some, but and Gabrielle Union. Yeah, Dwayne uh, but Wade. Then I told. Never mind, I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole. Um. <laughs> so yes, every team has some of those. The, Nebraska might have more than the Nuggets do. Honestly, the Nuggets have Peyton Manning and uh, Ken Jong. Just from last year, he's not even really a Nuggets fan. He was just going oh, to a really? bunch of Nuggets games, so he kind of get gets labeled one now. Um, and then uh, there, like, there's a meme guy that's from the podcast that I listen to, DNVR Nuggets podcast. I didn't mm-hmm. know it was the same guy for the longest time, but you have, have you seen those memes of the guy wearing the jeans that has the Denver Nuggets logo, like the Mellow yeah. Era logo on his back pockets? Yeah, that yeah. the Julian Strother wore. Yeah, uh-huh. the matching pair of yeah, yeah. So that also, I'm proud of myself for remembering what rookie that was. Yeah. I'm going to give myself a pat on the back. Yeah, but I'm yes. surprised you remember that. But uh, that guy in the original picture or video yeah. of, of the guy wearing those jeans is one of the members of the DNVR podcast. Which guy is it? Dev is his name. Really? Yeah. I did not realize that he was that guy. Yeah, I didn't I know, either. I've for seen the fan. A long time. Yeah, I thought it was a joke that people called him that. That people said that he was Denver Nuggets jeans but- guy. But he actually oh. is. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so a, if he counts wild. as a celeb fan, then we'll throw him in there too. But I actually gave him a hug at the DNVR bar when we were leaving oh. last year during the finals. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But anyway, that's sorry to, that's no, to derail no, that. No, it's cool. It's cool because that was like a fun, constructive thing. Yeah. Um, but anyway... That that part, that little inkling just annoys me a little bit. But it's fine. I was un... You were unable to make me sad for like two days after Monday night. I just was on the top of the world. I literally that night, I started a fire mm. in like my backyard. We had a fire pit. No one... I just was alone <laughs> because I knew I wasn't going to sleep. So I just enjoyed beers. Yeah. Drank beers. And then... Looked at the videos and the clips and yeah. just sat outside and enjoyed a fire by myself. And I was listening to music and it was the best. Yeah. It's it was probably just a, very, a vibe. It's probably a very different experience than like, you know, experiencing the 08 one because that was like, you, you were so young at that point. And, and I don't even really a... claim the 08 one. Like, I don't, I, oh, really? I didn't pay okay. enough attention to the Celtics to really claim mm-hmm. like the first. It's like 2013 was the first year that I really am like, I watched the Celtics. The Celtics are my okay. team and I can like claim them. Mm-hmm. It was like, yeah, freshman year was the first year that I really am like, that was of high school. I'm mm-hmm. like, I, that's when I claimed that my, my fandom started truly. Mm. Um, and so that's also, why I think this one's so different than all the Patriots ones because I started liking the Patriots cause they drafted a Nebraska football player. And so like they were good when I hopped on the bandwagon, if you want to call it that. I'm yeah. still there, so I'd like to think I'm not a bandwagon because we've been bad for four years now, but it's fine. doesn't matter. Um, but, like, this one was different because, like, I've seen this team hurt. Yeah, the And then, like, grow and get better. And um, I think the biggest jump that we made this year, like, obviously adding Drew was insanely huge. Yeah. And adding KP was insanely huge. But, like, the thing that makes me feel like it's repeatable is this the growth that you've seen in the two J's and honestly in Derek White's like offensive consistency? Because mm-hmm. I feel like last year, like there'd be times where I'm like, why can't we be consistent? Like, if we could be consistent and not even like consistent in like, oh, we need to make this many threes every game, but like consistent in like we don't let miss threes like stop us from taking good looks. Like just play Missoula ball, be consistent in. They did it this year. They got it done. I'm glad they're betting favorites going into next year, which I think is correct. Oh, really? The Denver Nuggets are two. Makes sense. That's um, what I would guess. And then I believe Minnesota was three, but that Ooh. might have changed because of a, a thing that we will talk about later with the Thunder. Yeah. Um, also, I love that they just started bringing out other members of the e- other players from teams in the East. Uh, in that, like the in the during the finals. Oh yeah, um, for the ESPN panel, yeah. 
And the only one that was like, nah, the Celtics are just really good was Julius Randle. Everyone mm. else was like, the only reason they got there is because we were hurt or I was hurt or they were hurt. But <laughs> Julius Randle was like, nah, they're they're pretty crazy. They're pretty good. They're they're just a good basketball team. Yeah. And so I I liked that. I Julius Randle made my heart a little happy there. But obviously Joel Embiid is like a Philly guy. I would expect nothing less. I'm not like actually some people are like Joel Embiid just a hater for life. I was like, I hope so. But then what he's what he said wasn't like that crazy hate was it? No, he it said wasn't. he said the Bucks gave the Celtics the championship. It was more like disparaging the Bucks than it was the Celtics. Yeah, but then his other thing was like, if I was healthy, I would be here, and I think that's oh. that's fine to be confident in yourself. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, but my favorite part about the Bucks gave them the championship is pictures of Drew Holiday and Al Horford in Sixers jerseys. I know the Drew Holiday thing was like forever ago. Oh, he, because he used to play for the Sixers. Be, people are saying that Joel as a joke uh, that he had them as teammates and he didn't win a championship is basically yes. what they're saying. Yes, like that was like the joke is like okay. the Bucks handed him the title, but then it's like the guys that also were extremely pivotal uh, were wearing Sixers jerseys. Somebody also threw like Jaden Springer into that, but he's just <laughs> an awesome vibes guy, um, which is great. Anyway. I think I've, I'm like, we can get to like actually talking about stuff now. I think my victory lap is other than shout out Jalen Brown, shout out Jason Tatum, which I think we'll talk about those two probably a little bit more in depth later, mm. if I'm remembering right. The, the your Jason Tatum and Jalen. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I'll skip over them because I'll give them love, later, love letters shortly. Uh, mm. Shout out to Al for just being like energy, big plays at his age. He got it done. Awesome. Derek White. Being the most overqualified hustle guy in the history of planet Earth, Drew Holiday for doing that also, and uh, Sam Hauser for like just I love this team and I will forever and always, even if they didn't win the championship. But I think I said that before because it just I love this team and they're awesome and they were the best ever and I love them all. <laughs> and Luke Cornett, I just want to say all their names. I think yeah, I'm not going Do to, but I don't need to. Oh, okay. But I was gonna give you that, but. They're just all and Brad Stevens didn't get it, did get the love. I'm glad he got the amount of love that he got for yeah. like building the team. He should have got Finals MVP. Uh, there's an argument. <laughs> First ever. Uh, Peyton Pritchard. Oh my goodness! I can't believe I forgot the boy, the kid, the I do this <laughs> kid. Yeah. That is insanity. I don't think that like on the outside looking in, you're just like, oh, he's a good player. No, this is the fact that like. That was his first minutes. The first time touching the basketball since the layup lines was him getting a sick outlet pass from Al Horford, by the way, off the Mm -hmm. rebound. Yeah. Just flicks it to him. And then to just go up, maybe even allegedly get fouled by Luka. Maybe. He also traveled, but whatever. It doesn't matter. Wishy-washy doesn't matter. Yeah. But just, just drills it. And that's when I knew the game was over. That's when I started celebrating. <laughs> yeah. Was when, because the, the Mavericks had like kind of built a little momentum, not a ton, but they had like, okay, we, we're catching up. We this can play with these guys. going into halftime. Let's, let, going into halftime, let's cut into it. Just like 3.6 seconds left on the clock. Mm-hmm. Celtics quick, no, free throw. A missed Luka free throw. No, not no, Luka. No, wait a minute, Luka. Luka was back in the back. Missed. Court. Maybe it was a... a I don't Derek remember Jones. what it was off of, but yeah, there was a... It was a missed free throw, I'm almost positive, because Al okay. forgot the rebound and then flicked it to Pritchard, and then Pritchard just hits this like half-court logo beyond the line. Yeah, behind half-court by a good like six, seven feet, actually. And it's just more that like it wasn't a Hail Mary lob. He was like, I do this. Mm-hmm. I do is what he yelled at Jason Tatum because he it was his second ish. time doing that in this series in in this final series, <laughs> which and is just crazy. No, it was just awesome. But mm-hmm. yeah, KP, Drew, Jalen, Jason, Al, uh, Pritchard, uh, Kai Luke, Hauser, Walsh, Tillman, Keita. K- I should know how Kata. to say his last name. It's yeah. Keita. I'm pretty sure it's Keita. Yeah. Brissett. I'm I'm forgetting somebody. Springer, um, Mah- Mikhail Luke. I already said him. Yeah, there's that one white guy that I still don't Diddy know Davison, the name of. Cornet. No, there's one white guy that never gets in, but I always see him on the bench. And I, I've I looked at the roster one time, and he wasn't on the roster. 
The but I've... only person it might be, and I don't know why he'd be there, is one of the be- like the guys that's a G League guy, like kind of hard. Is he's Drew a two way? Oh, I think that's who it is. I don't know if he's a two way even. He's like kind of like. Maybe he isn't like contract, but in terms of playing, he oh, is a yeah, strictly G League. In order to be on, like there on the roster, he has to be a two way contract. And I'm, I, it's Drew Peterson. He's like a third year, or maybe he's even a rookie. Yeah, he's, he's a rookie. an old rookie. Yeah, because I had him in that one game rapid fire where like it gives you the picture of the person you have to like you know answer something oh. about them. And I was like, who is that? I've ne- I've never even seen that guy. And then later after that, I started seeing him all over the place. Also, in his player photo, he's wearing a red, like a white jersey with red outlines, like a uh, red um, accent color. So it's on a different team. It's his player photo. So I, but I don't know. Maybe that's the main Celtics. I don't know. I'm pretty no, sure they would. They're be green, green and he but played maybe, at USC. They wouldn't have. Yeah, it's not his college photo though. It's like an NBA. It has like the NBA jersey sponsor thing. On it, I think that might oh. be the. It might. Be, it looks like a heat jersey, to be honest. <laughs> That'd be funny. Yeah, but anyways, not to go off on a Drew Peterson tangent. Um, who I just learned his name, but yeah, I love the team. I love all of them, and a lot of them coming back. Probably won't get all of them, but a lot of them will be back. Mm-hmm. You have everybody for the most every all the core pieces still under contract. Hauser's um, the only one I'm not sure. Okay. Hauser. That's not cool. I'm like talking about like top eight. If we yeah, have yeah. Hauser, we have our top eight again next year. Yeah, he's one of the playoff rotation guys. You know? Yeah. But something that I'd like to, well, I guess before that, I'm going to look at these uh, numbers really quick that we had just mentioned. Oh, the championship my goodness. odds. We have him again. He's back again next year. Uh, oh, Sam, Sam Hauser. Hauser. He's on under contract for next year. He is. Nice. Two million dollars. That's a steal, honestly. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it is. A steal. I'm guessing it's this, still on his rookie deal. Uh, yes, I believe yeah. so. Uh, looking at those championship odds, though, for next year, very way too early. I was just yep. curious about him. I'm looking at CBS, which I don't know if they have. They do it differently at all because all of these numbers are plus. My, does minus yeah. mean you're? No, they'd be plus. Okay. All these would be plus because it's like way too. Celtics are like two fifty plus or something in that ballpark. Plus three hundred. Yeah. Yeah. So that that would be correct. So that's this far the, out. It's plus. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, like uh, for some reason, in my mind though, I was thinking that was the other way around. That usually it's when you're minus. That's like not you over the field. You know, it's like three to one odds would be minus three hundred. But minus, so it's like minus would be that there's a fifty percent chance that the self if it was just minus anything in theory, the Vegas thing would be. It is a 50% chance or 51% chance the Celtics win the title and a 49% chance that the at field minimum. would win yeah. at minimum. Gotcha. And I think that they're like probably giving the Celtics more like a 30% chance. No, yeah, I, I, or, I get or that. Or some other. Yeah, it would yeah. have to be over 50% essentially. Like mm-hmm. they're flip a coin over half the time the Celtics win for it to be. Nobody would bet on it if somebody was a negative favorite. Like in the negatives, just because that's so far out, the universe can explode and change. And yeah, yeah. I guess I just in, in my memory was flipping around what plus meant versus what minus meant. I thought that was the other way around. But literally, everyone is under contract f- again. Everyone's a- literally everybody. Yeah, that's what I thought. Alt- for some reason, but twenty twenty five is the year where the reckoning comes. Mm, Derek have- White, which will not be a problem. He'll already be taken care of. Uh, Al Horford. Jaden Springer, O'Shea Brissett, Sam Hauser. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, but to look at those odds, though, really quick, Boston Celtics are plus 300. And then in second, the Denver Nuggets are plus 750. Timberwolves are third with plus 900. And then OKC is right behind them at plus 950. When was these updated? Um, June 18th. So before. It'd be after. Or before, yeah. No, because I think... If anyone doesn't know why we keep talking like weirdly vaguely about you, um, you OKC, they got Alex Caruso for Josh Giddy straight up, Mm -hmm. and I don't think it's bad for either team. Like realistically, there's like a world where OKC gave up more, but like with what they needed, they got back so much more. Yeah, like it was a good trade, 
but like in a vacuum where the rest of their team doesn't matter, they might have given up a tiny bit more just because of the youth of Giddy and the potential upside in that type of the prospectness of Giddy as yeah. opposed to the today basketball player of Giddy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we'll talk sure. about that when we get there. And then the Bucks are tied with them at plus 950. And so are the Mavericks. And so those three are tied for uh, fourth place. And then after that, it drops off a cliff to the Knicks, who are the, I guess that would make them the seventh. Yeah, the seventh team. And they're plus 1,500. Or the Pacers. The Pacers are pretty low. That feels crazy to me. That, the, like, the Pacers, Pacers are plus in- 4,000. Why aren't the Pacers and the Knicks in the same universe? I'm not sure. You know? So we have, yeah, Knicks are at that seven. feels like they should be in the same universe. Because, like, if the Pacers, like, stay healthy and play like they were early, like, are we sure they are just better than the Knicks? Yeah, I mean, they're... Like, if you get, like, early season Tyrese Halliburton with Pascal Siakam, mm-hmm. that team is without a shadow of a doubt better than the Knicks in my brain. Yeah, but... I mean, Pacers sitting here at 14th, tied at 14th. Can you guess some of the teams that are above them? Is it like the Rockets and just stupid like that? No. Okay, at least it's not that dumb. Okay, 14. Pelicans? Are they like right above them in that, in that ballpark? No, the Pelicans are lower. They're at like 20, it looks like. Or maybe like 18. Okay. By quick of the eye. Spurs? Are the Spurs up there thinking that Wemby's okay, going to make why, a jump? Why are you thinking of all these teams that are like okay. so... I just I just thought I would throw out like stupid ones. Okay. Or like crazy ones that like I could... No, the I mean, they're, one, not, they're not like... They're the kind of the opposite logic of what you're doing right now. But I still... They're ones that like actively make sense, but it's a little bit like... I don't know if they it makes sense, but they're established pe- like teams with like... Wait, do, do they have like the Sixers down there? The Sixers are eighth. Okay. You said that. Yeah, and then these other teams, are they're all older teams. Every team that's above the Pacers. Oh, like the Clippers, the Lakers, Yep, those Warriors. that's 9th, 10th, and 11th. Those are those um, teams right there. Then you'd probably also have the Heat, obviously. The duh. Heat are 13th. So I need 12th. Mm-hmm. It's another old team. They got swept this year in the first round. Oh, the Suns. <laughs> yep. Phoenix Suns. And then the Cavs are tied with the Pacers at 14. No, the Knicks should not be where they are. That, like, irritates me. I mean, if they're healthy... They... Not in ranking, but in, like, the gap. You know what I mean? Yeah, from fif- plus 1,500 to plus 4,000. That big of a difference. This is, like, double and, a, and then some change? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That seems preposterous. Yeah. A wee bit. I would agree. But... Moving on from that, though, I, there's something I want to ask you about before we leave the, you know, this little topic of just the championship. Victory um, corner. I saw something being spread around a few days ago on social media about ranking the last five champions. And oh, I like saw Boston, like the last five teams to win the championship. Oh, ranking those teams. Yeah. And I saw. Uh, one of our friends from the the Hoop Journal podcast. He's a very well known Celtics fan. One of the your celebrity fans. Did he put us at one? No, he put you at two. So that's the thing okay. I was gonna I was yeah, gonna ask. I'm you okay about. with that. Okay. I was gonna say we should be two or three in my brain. Okay, so who's number one? So okay, five years. Uh huh. Us. Yep. You guys. So yep. This year's Celtics, last year's Nuggets, just for people that don't know, this was stupid to me. This year's Celtics, last year's Nuggets, mm-hmm. Warriors. In 22. Lakers. In 20. Raptors. No, that's 19. So you got 21 is what you're missing. Bucks. Bucks. Okay, 21 Bucks. Okay, so we got okay, 24 okay, okay. Nuggets, or 24 Celtics, 23 Nuggets, 22 Warriors, 21 Bucks, and 20 Lakers. I think my the, the only thing that I feel kind of like, not I don't want to say I'm confident about any of these, but I feel like I'm going to put the Lakers at five. Wow. Just because of the Mickey Mouse championship? I don't know. Why, and maybe that's why, like, subconsciously in my brain, my brain did that. 
I, mean, I didn't I, even like really think about it. This is just like what the, the my brain is thinking. Yeah, all five of these teams are good. To be fair, like actually good. Like I don't yeah. think that there was a oh that was a what people were acting like the Celtics would be this year. I don't think that like there's that big of a drop off. But I think in my mind, I think there is a clear fifth team to me. Is it the Warriors? Or, yep. Yeah. 22 Warriors would be the first. I just witnessed Steph me. become an unstoppable force of just dark magic. Yeah. So I don't know if... My, it's all subcon... Like, it's it's not me being analytical and factual. It's like what my gut is telling me. But Andrew Wiggins was their second best player and got a vote for finals MVP. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that, that, that did it, actually. I have no doubt in my mind that they're five now. Yeah. I'm going to go... I might be wrong. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna stick with it. I think the Bucks are the best with how they were. Ooh, I I, think- I really do with like that year with what Giannis was doing. No one else had like fallen off really yet. I think I'm gonna go Bucks one. Yeah, us two, you three, Lakers four, Warriors five. Okay, that's that's fair. I would, I I guess I'll tell you Dion's order first, and I'll tell you my order. Dion's order was. 22 Warriors at five, the 20 Lakers at four, 21 Bucks at three, 24 Celtics at two, and the 23 Nuggets at one. And then my order would be the same, except switch around the Bucks and the Lakers. I would put the Bucks fourth and really? the Lakers third. Yeah. And I think, I think the, the Lakers are, I mean, they're somewhat close to the Celtics because of like the, the top two firepower. That year ability, yeah, was just so the year high. that they did it was nuts. But the Celtics are just so like evenly spread, like such a good, well rounded unit, you know, that I, I it's, it's hard to pick one either way. But I do kind of I place the Celtics at two personally. I was watching that Bucks team when I was like with my first daughter being born in the hospital, so that team is probably also better than I think it is. Mm-hmm. Like, I this is all not analytical, it's just like, yeah, they're just I not have super warm, deep, fuzzy feelings about that. That Bucks team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, not that, like, oh, I just, but just they were, they just felt like they did whatever they wanted. And that's probably also more what, like, my brain is messing with is the, is that part of it, the, like, how dominant they looked in the finals. Well, they were down the, 2 0 to start it, but yeah. And then it, it was, did not end like that. <laughs> and I always blame the first two games on Budenholzer. <laughs> I shouldn't have, but I just did. Yeah. It was uh, more Devin Booker, if I remember right. Devin Booker just was kind of nutso banana boy for two games. I think, uh, yeah, I think that was the case. I'm pretty sure Chris Paul did played pretty well the first two games, and then was did he get hurt or I think hurt? he got hurt at one Phantom point hurt? towards the end. But I don't know if it was right then at the turn of you know who was winning games or not. That's really tough. Ranking those five, yeah. I was happy to see the most like places I was seeing ranking them. A lot of people very consistently had the Nuggets first, which I was like, oh, that feels good. Even though, you know, we had this disappointing loss uh, that kicked us out this year. There's still people given last year's Nuggets respect, which I, I appreciate that. I'm glad for that. And then also in my what what puts the Nuggets? Is it just having the best player? I think the Celtics? having the best player, but also just the way that that machine fits together in such a way and also ju- at just the rate that they the level of competition i just need to remove that they're not the teams aren't playing each other that's like what my brain needs to like undo but even if they were if they're playing each other do you not think that the 23 nuggets would be at least oh it would be an actual series for sure yeah it would be at, if not like dead even odds i would say the nuggets would probably be favored wouldn't you 23 nuggets i think i don't know yeah i i the reason why i I think they would be is because i'm also on the high of watching what jalen brown and drew holiday did to luca and think that jamal murray's just going to be useless Mm -hmm. that's like and that's again i've said it like too many times already I, i i need to just not like i need to like go into a cave and think about it factually for like a week and then I can give you a real answer. <laughs> yeah. Uh no, that's fair. I'm I this is good preparation for hopefully a, a finals matchup that will come eventually, you know. This yeah. the Nuggets and the Celtics. So I think these cores sh- are bound to meet up at some point. 
I did tell, I was talking to a buddy today, actually. I was dropping off a, a couple of things anyway. And I was like, it was irritating me because like fans of Western Conference teams were like, we would have put up a better fight against the Celtics. I'm like, sure, you could have said a better fight. But the only team that has the right to think that they could have maybe won is Den- they're the yeah. only ones mm-hmm. that have the right to think they maybe could have won. I still don't think they do, but they're the mostly because the Celtics had like essentially three practice rounds and then had to play an actual series. Yeah, but just because of how injuries happened. Yeah, that's true. And it's hard to do hypothetically like how healthy the Nuggets would have been. Yeah, in, in the finals, but you know, if if the Celtics are Porzingisless you know, the way they kind of were, uh, that would be, you know, a big factor as well. It's just, yeah, it's, it's basically impossible to do those hypotheticals. Yeah. Um, no, but I, I'm the T wolves. I'm like, no, it would not be the same as the Mavs. It would probably be more competitive than the Mavs. The Celtics like got maybe. the best draw possible in hindsight, or maybe I should have seen this at the beginning. Also out of all the teams that could have came out of the West, there's oh, no yeah. one else they would have rather had. Really? I mean, all, other than maybe the maybe Thunder. The, that's what I was getting. Maybe the Thunder. Yeah. Or maybe but the like, Clippers, if you even include them as like a, which I, I think they should really, be. But, but um, just because of how, yeah, th- that was just like, this is ideal. Like, yeah. it's almost like without it being intentional, like T-Wolves to, build, to be, beat the Nuggets level of like, difficult to play into if you're the Mavericks. Yeah, the way they match up was rough for sure. But I guess the one point that I would like to make just going back to this 23 Nuggets versus the 24 Celtics hypothetical. The one thing it it doesn't mean everything, but I think it is like a point to at least observe or look at. And you know, the Nuggets and the the Celtics uh do- level of dominance, the way they dominated these playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, for we're very, very similar, you know, the Nuggets lost one more game, but if you're, if you're looking at point differential, they were around the same. I think the Nuggets were about like plus 10 and a lot of their, and in the same way as the Celtics, the Nuggets like had, if I'm remembering right, like a couple, like one of their losses was also just an ugly loss. Didn't they get like destroyed by the, the Suns in one game? Oh no. The Suns only beat us by like two and three basically. For some this reason, I thought you had one series, and maybe I'm mixing up years. One but. bigger loss might have been against the Timberwolves. That one I thought round. went overtime. Or did you win the overtime game? I think we won the overtime game, I want to say, but maybe not. I might be misremembering. The loss might have been in overtime. And the Heat you won. lost by 21. Okay, nope, yeah. So that it, was, no, that was last year. That was the regular season last year. Sorry. Oh, gotcha. It was, no, they won the overtime game, and it was by six. So you okay. did not have a bad yeah. loss. For some reason in my brand, I thought you had a loss. So the Heat was... must have been the biggest loss. Game two of the Heat, which was probably like 10, maybe, something like that. Nine. I think it was like I nine, I want to say. I think we were, it was around like 100, one of our scores was. Three. It was only three? Game two. Yeah. Wow, I yeah. did not realize it got that close. 111 to 108. Jeez. Okay. Um. For some reason, I remember that because we were behind for most of that game. But then, so then the, you used to must, must have not won games by as much because I did see the point differential was similar. Yeah, yeah. And so, the Celtics had the game that shall not be talked about that I mm-hmm. don't want to think about. Mm-hmm. It was a 40 or 38 point loss. Yeah, but I guess is, the, the point I'm making is that they performed somewhat identically, but I think the level of competition was pretty significantly different. Yeah. Because, I mean, the Celtics, like, the Mavs were definitely the it's best team they faced. It's also tough because, like, if you take out the Mavericks out, which I think was an outlier, the game just got away and then they just kind of gave up. And, and the game role four. players just were not playing the same way they did all playoffs long before which, that. And that's part of the playoffs when you're comparing the whole thing. Mm-hmm. But there's, with both of the teams, there's only so much more, like, dominant you could be than just. Like, the Heat having a crazy shooting night, that's the only reason the Heat didn't get swept. The Cavaliers are, I think, the only team that it was not, like, a weird... Cra- Donovan Mitchell had himself a really good game, and the Celtics got a bad shooting night. And that's why the Celtics lost game two of yeah. round two. 
and then like there's like a a world where I was I thought we could have actually like got it done and not Gotten lost the game in the playoffs. Out. Yeah, no, Just I because mean, like the Heat loss was so fluky. Mm-hmm. I mean, they shot like fifty four percent from three point land or whatever preposterously high number it was. Yeah, on insane volume. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, they shot yeah. 23 for 43. I think actually, like, on paper, the 23 Nuggets look like are better now. The more and more I'm thinking about it, are definitely the better of the two. But I think it's closer if they were to actually play. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that that matchup becomes a lot more of the compelling side than just straight comparing the numbers. Because mm-hmm. of the, the Nuggets resume, playoff resume exclusively... Um, would be like the thing that would be like, okay, that's, yeah, that's kind of nuts. Mm-hmm. But yeah, regardless though, this 24 Celtics team, it's it's a team that's going to go down in history as a very interesting one. At the minimum, a top three Celtics team of all time. Yeah. But, I think. Mm-hmm. I mean. Which that's not like a throwaway, well, that's not that hard to do if you want. Well, it kind of is if, in Boston, saying yeah. you're a top three team in Boston. Mm-hmm. Honestly, if they don't have that super ugly loss to the Mavericks, I think you're like talking about whether it's them or the 80, uh, Six. Five, 86 Celtics, 85, 86 Celtics. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's that, obviously it's the Celtics, but it's that like those two and then a giant gap if they didn't have this big, ugly, bruised, stain thing on their resume yeah of that game four loss did you see my camera i did yeah it's just on discord no it's not it's on my obs and it's done it it, the last episode it was doing it oh it's apple you have apple stuff don't you yeah but it never used to do that it's uh, there's probably an update maybe when i got my new computer is when it's doing it but i don't know what makes it do that you kind of sort of made a thumbs up oh right there i was with your like here oh Like, if you just make a thumbs up, I think that's what does it. Whoa. So what makes it do, like, the the celebrating and and balloons? I don't know, because I don't think anybody knows, because it's happened when, like, someone was FaceTiming and they were on ESPN. Like, balloons went up. Oh, really? On ESPN. It was on first take, I think. That that makes me laugh that this happens to other people, because I thought, I was like, what is going on when I was editing the podcast? Or or we were talking last episode or a couple episodes ago. Oh, I... And that's also why I didn't see it last episode. Yeah, because we were in the same room. We were just talking to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's because you were making a rough thumbs up when you were like holding your collar and then it. Yeah. Anyways. uh, I think it's like when you're in big voice calls, you can like do that. And then it like is like a thing that attracts attention without you having to make noise type of thing. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. um, Because if you're talking to someone and you make a thumbs up, there's no reason there needs to be. Just another <laughs> thumbs up made. That's yeah. completely useless. No. Um, no, but this is that is an interesting um like art like thought, the mm-hmm. the Nuggets thing. And then but I do think this Celtics team, especially if they like follow it up with, as I said, nineteen banner nineteen and potentially banner twenty, like that that'll turn this whole this core of guys, I wonder what how they will be uh, regarded in in history in 25 years in Boston. Yeah, no, for sure. Because this sounds weird. I think this group has already passed, like, when they're, like, done and retired and old. Excluding what this person does in the media, I think they've kind of already passed Paul, Pierce, and KG. In term, and it's hard because there's like recency bias. You're talking of about Jalen and Jason. Is that what you're saying? Yes, Jalen and Jason oh. and Al a little bit, like just this core essentially. Mm. They you they're past them just because they've in terms of like had so much time together, done so much. I together. think it's the time, and granted, they only have the one title, but there's so many like moments yeah. already. From they're at least tied with like that. Group, yeah. Jason Tatum almost took us to the finals as a rookie. Like we took the Cavs to seven. Yeah, in 2018, and you were up three two. I don't. Was it Jason Tatum the best player on that team though? It was him or Jalen. Because Kyrie wasn't playing that year. It, oh yeah, that's what made that it was, that was the Terry crazy. Rozier crazy year. No against Gordon Hayward either. Against the Bucks. Period. That was Terry Rozier was, was insane against the Bucks. He was good. I'm not saying he wasn't good. What? Yeah, I'm no, I didn't even make a thumbs up that time. I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but 
the Terry Rozier, I remember against the Bucks because Eric Bledsoe hated Terry Rozier. Yeah. It mm-hmm. was this weird. And then, like, Terry Rozier were a Drew Bledsoe jersey. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it was this whole. Yeah. There's been, a, like, a couple of weird little beefs that Celtics have had with other teams in these, like, down years. Like, the heated rivalry between. This isn't going to make sense with today's NBA, but if you go back, like, seven years. The Wizards and Celtics were locked in a battle for like two playoff runs in a row. And mm-hmm. it was Isaiah Thomas needed like a 50 point game to lift his past the. Right after his sister died. Passed I'm away, sure, yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, sibling. I don't wild. know. For, I think it was his sister. She died in a car accident, I think. And then yeah. his back got messed up. And then there's all the things that made Danny Ainge Danny Ainge that people don't super love about him <laughs> yeah. um, on how that situation was handled. But. Uh, I think that it was just it was a nice culmination to get out of my little Celtics. I knew this would have been way worse if we would have done this on any day before today. Mm-hmm. This this like dreaming thing that I'm doing would have been astronomically worse. Yeah. Um honestly, I'm going to add into your dreaming though. Uh thinking about this decade of the 2020s, maybe we could see another a throwback 80s? to the don't yeah, do to it the to 80s, me. But replace the Lakers with the Nuggets. Do you think so? What do you, you think that, No, do you like who who else is our, who else are the Lakers of this era? Oh, that's I'm kind true. of offended right now. Who who else besides the Nuggets are going to be the Lakers of this era? I don't know if like the reason I don't think it's possible is I don't think that the NBA is getting too good for anyone to be that dominant. I don't think we'll be like the '80s. Oh, but wh- okay. Why why did this come up only when I start brought up the Nuggets though? Because the West <laughs> is a lot better than the East. I don't know. I mean. For projecting forward, though? Oh, my. All year, I've had to hear the West is so much. I guess projecting forward is what you added. I've had to constantly hear the West is so much oh, yeah, better. No, no, no. This West... year, for sure. But, okay. And next but year, that probably is why the thought also. thought crept into my head when you brought up the team that's coming out of the West. And it's because the West has a lot more potential. This is going yeah. to be a problem. What you got to get through. Yeah. Yeah. Like the East. The problems are getting old and angry with their teams, potentially, because apparently Jimmy Butler, I think that someone is, is, is have you heard anything about Jimmy Butler being traded? I just know maybe? that he's in, yeah, he's in trade rumors, yeah. But that sounds like more, it's other teams wanting Jimmy. Sh- reaching out for Jimmy, okay. Yeah. But um, I'm not sure if that, that is all starting because of something somebody heard from the, the, the Heat's team. camp, you know. I don't know about that part, but. But. I I think that the rest of the East at this moment in time, outside of the very, very young teams, like the Magic at like near the end of the 2020s, if this group stays together, but like mm-hmm. Cleveland still needs to figure out if Donovan Mitchell even likes it there. They need to figure out the, the overlap on the, the roster. The Bucks yeah. are aging, which is the same issue yes. they had. They just replaced mm-hmm. defense guy Drew with offense guy Dame. Yep. And a Sixers. Lot of, um, and then the Sixers are also in a lesser extent, but like it's more the health of Embiid. Like, how will mm-hmm. he be able to get back and get healthy and what level will he be at? Because Maxi is like a year or two if Embiid can't from being like just the guy that Embiid is there sometimes. Um Yeah. And that's why yeah. the Sixers are definitely the most different from the rest of the East. Um, I guess mm-hmm. I talked about the Pacers, too. There's Pacers, definitely yeah. a universe where that, not a universe where that works, but um, a lot of issues um, that that could arise if you are trying to continue to be the team that comes out of the East. But um, the only thing mm-hmm. that will slow the Celtics down, I think, will be the new CBA. That's the only thing that... like Keeping in a, your roster. Yeah, and obviously, always keeping your roster has been like an issue. But like, I think that Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, even if the rest of the team gets downgraded in quality, but is a similar role, like if everyone else, we can't pay everybody forever. That's just how the world works. But if like, I think those two are continuing to get better and good enough that that will be enough to get a couple finals berths almost regardless of what else is going on. If the team is being built competently, I'm not saying that like. Put them on the Wizards, they're going to the finals. But, like, you build a competent, mm-hmm. yeah. coherent team around those two. I think those two are good enough to carry you 
regularly deep into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. For sure. With several finals appearances. And with the new CBA, you can keep two guys paid max and have a team still. Isn't that less so than it is has been, though? Isn't that the change? That like you, know, you can only do two guys now as opposed to more. Oh, is yeah. what I would because there used to use used to be able to fit like not full max guys but like a couple people and it would work out fine. But with the new it's, tiers, I and mean, stuff, the Suns have three max guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but with the new like tiers and stuff like that and the whole thing, um, you can comfortably yeah. have two guys. Yeah, yeah, and then build around that with like that makes sense. Yeah. Pretty much have like two guys and then like like that are getting paid super mega max money and then like one or two guys that are like 10 15% of your cap and then just a bunch of guys that are just not getting that much money. Mhm. Mm yeah. Pretty much overpaying those middle of the road guys compared to what they used to and super under because we've talked about this when we discussed the new rules. These new rules really really benefit the super tippy tippy top and then like the top of the middle. Mm -hmm. Everyone yep. else is not doing better with the new CBA rules. Yeah, for sure. Um, because of vets minimums and all of those things being re retooled and what's okay and what's not. And yeah, it's best for the Jeremy Grants and Fred Van Vliet's of the world. As like opposed to the uh, Dennis Schroeder, Sam Hauser's and the, those type. Well, I don't want to say that, put that disdain on Sam Hauser, but Dennis Schroeder is a perfect example. Yeah. Um, anyways, before we move finally off of the Celtics, the last thing we we're going to talk about was the Bill Russell trophy got handed out to Jalen Brown. Uh, so he won both the Larry Bird and the Bill Russell, the conference finals and the finals MVP. Um, I really thought the Eastern conference finals trophy should have been given to Jason Tatum. I guess I shouldn't say like I really felt it should. I just would have leaned that way, but I get the case obviously for Jalen Brown. And I think I might be even more in that camp in the finals. I was going to gonna say that the Eastern Conference Finals, I was close lean Jalen. In the in the finals, it was close lean Jason. Which is wild considering in the Eastern Conference Finals, Jason Tatum averaged 39 and 6. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. 39? 30. Nine. Okay. And six. Yeah. Um, six assists. Yeah, I think the this kind of uh, sort of pivots into my other topic that was like I thought I had this big brain like could be a whole episode sometime in the future, but it's not going to really work. What if we're looking at Jason Tatum in the wrong lens of what type of archetype player he is? Everybody puts him in the Kobe lens. What if we need to put him in the Magic Johnson lens instead? What? Jason Tatum is Magic Johnson. No, 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 no. Not the same. <laughs> or, or like, but even that archetype, the that, player that mold. style. If you think of how he's like, where he's gotten better in his game year over year, and what he's leaned into. Obviously, he score focuses on scoring more a little bit, but he's become a way better playmaker. Yeah, but I'm not saying he's Magic Johnson. That's not what I was trying to say at no, all. No, no, but uh, yeah, I'm. I get. I'm not even saying that either. But even saying that he's like has the the structure or the ground you know like the the player type of magic johnson it does not like magic johnson is like you know pass way more than score yeah jason tatum is like he's pass he's probably more pass than kobe but not by like a i mean pat but he is more pass than kobe for sure by a decent amount um and he also is a lot less like I'm going to play hero ball when I'm getting double teamed. Like he's more willing. He's a much more willing passer than Kobe is what I would say. He's not, I don't think he's really setting out the offense all that often to like only be a playmaker though. You think he is? I think, I think in think, this playoffs that like switch kind of turned on. I feel like it was just more, he was reading and reacting to what the defense was giving him. It was like, if the defense are, are playing heavy to him, then he's just going to take what they're giving up. And that's a pass almost every time. Yeah. You know, I don't know if it like he's just willing to do that. But I don't know if his game plan going out there is like, I'm going to dot people up and, you know, d drop dimes. I think. Yeah. I just I just feel like Tatum is much more of like a Paul George. 
with just a, like a way better Danny Green, like an infinitely better Danny Green, Danny Granger. Paul George is who I said. Yeah, Paul George, Danny. Yeah, it was Danny Granger, wasn't it? All those. What, like, oh, the, oh, I see what you're saying. You're you're giving him a teammate that yeah, he also had. that would okay. he would kick out to in yeah, those types yeah. of. Uh huh. Or George Hill, I guess you could go. Or Kawhi Leonard. I was going off of like Pacers, Paul George. Pacers, Paul George, yeah. Uh When he was like the guy, because I don't think he's the guy now, because he's not Kawhi Leonard. I guess when Kawhi's hurt, he's the guy. Which is pretty often. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But I mean, I'm just skill set wise, though. Like he's, uh, he matches up with Paul George pretty seamlessly. I, I feel like. I don't know. It's just Magic Johnson is just like not a. A sh- uh, shooter off the dribble creator, and like I don't know, just Maybe there's that's a ve- more is Jason Tatum should not shoot as often. Well, I would agree with that. And I think like, he does shot three. selection is his biggest weakness. I I agree with that. Jason Tatum so- shot selection is his biggest shortcoming. Or maybe I worded it right. That's the best scenario. If Jason Tatum turns into more of a Magic Johnson, oh, you yeah, mm-hmm. not I see what, what you- he did, but like. We saw like glimpse of now. That's when they were like terrifying. Obviously, they're still he when he does have to score. It's because he's going to the rim and not settling for anything and being like, "Oh wait, I'm like six eleven and like sneakily strong. I should go up to the rim." Yeah. As opposed to like Kobe, like standout ISO, like, and just take away, take a fadeaway three, and you hit. Uh, t- 27% of them. That's cool. You know what you hit a lot more of? Um, passes to the wide open corner guy. Yeah. Um, that's, and I, and I don't think my brain had fully developed the thought yet. So I definitely didn't mean to say that opening it up, but I think that's mm. more like the train that my brain was starting to go down was the way that the Jalen and Jason duo, I think works the best and leads to the most like, oh, this is like a historical duo, like of ever, potentially, mm-hmm. which I think that yeah. potential is there. I, mm-hmm. I'm i sipping the Kool-Aid, but I, like, I'm, I will not be shocked if this goes down as an all-time duo ever, um, mm-hmm. is if Jason turns into the kind of like, most of the time is like, the, I'm the, the primary, like getting the things going. Obviously, if you have Derek White, you don't need to do that. But if you ever find yourself in a season where, I don't even want to say it. You don't have Derek White or you don't have Drew Holiday and you don't have a guy that can do that. I think I'd rather have Jason do that than Jalen. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. I, I totally agree with that. Yeah. Um, And then because Jalen has turned into just a just monster offensively Jaylen, yeah. and then obviously mm-hmm. defensively because yeah, he's become like twice as good of a player. The car, he got like paid. From, it's almost yeah. like like how much you pay him just makes him that level. He just <laughs> matches the level of what he's getting paid. Yeah. Could no, be. because I, I think that Jalen getting better was more important to us finally getting over the hill than like oh, yeah. acquiring Drew was. Like I think that like that level of I I'm not I want Jalen to drive into the paint and kick it out. The Warriors yeah. finals, I was like, stop trying to drive into them. You lose the handle, but uh-huh. now his handle and is... And against the the Heat also, And too. against the... As short as last year. What we talked about last year, there was some sort of injury. I can't remember. I oh, forgot to true. look if it was hand or wrist or... I think he yeah. cut his hand last year. Yeah, I agree. Um, there's just... It's just so much art, and I just... Mm, I love this team so much. Yeah. I need to stop doing this now. Sorry. But, but I, fi- I personally, in the finals, leaned... I think Jason Tatum should have gotten the finals MVP. Yeah, but I, I agree. loved, loved, loved that Jalen Brown said thank you, and then said I could not do it if it wasn't for Jason Tatum. That was like the first sentence out of his mouth. He was getting mm-hmm. ahead of the national. Is this gonna rub Jalen Jason Tatum the wrong way? What is did did he smile enough when they announced Jalen Brown? And mm-hmm. then also part of me, even if you're happy for a friend, if you genuinely wanted something. You're not going to be able to like fully be like, oh yeah, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Like you'll have a moment. But I like, think he he looked he looked. No, fine. he was happy. But yeah. like, even if you were like looking into it, and he's like, oh, he had a moment. If he was mad, it wasn't him. Yeah, they're all in the NBA. They're hyper competitors. 
So even if it's with their like friends and stuff, you would like mm-hmm. to be recognized for what you did. So you yeah. might have had like a moment of damn. But then he immediately was like, We won the finals. Like mm-hmm. Jalen got it. Like he's the finals MVP. This is mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. And that's yeah. what it I seemed mean- like it was. Like if there was any like oh sh-, it was over. It was just like they're all hyper competitive. That's like why they're there and why we're here. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Um, um I mean Jalen was a little bit more efficient. Uh I but like Tatum, I think, had a little bit better. Did he average end up averaging a triple double? I bet you game four messed with it. He was he had to be knocking yeah, on the door I, of averaging a triple double if it wasn't for, for sure. game four. Yeah. Also, he was just the the one that was dealing with so much more defensive attention. Defensive attention, and then on the defensive side. Jalen deserves all the credit on the planet for what he did to Luca and Kyrie, depending on where he was. But yeah, what yeah. let the him turn stuff. his brain off in tunnel vision on those guys was what Jason Tatum was doing in the background to everyone else. Because when yeah. you don't have to worry about the oop coming because Jason Tatum's the one playing the defense, or you don't mm-hmm. have to worry about the the corner three because Al Horford or Drew Holiday's taking away that outlet or Derek White or whoever it is. Mm-hmm. That makes your ability to like, okay, I can, ironically, we joked about Jalen Brown's tunnel vision being bad, but like, in yeah. this case, it was like planned, like, just hound him, do whatever you want, yeah. just, we we will cover everything else, if another bucket is because of Luka does something crazy, it's not on you, it's on mm-hmm. us not letting you just lock onto him defensively, and J- like, Jalen took that like to heart, like, my mm-hmm. favorite was in game five. He's like, if Luca stays, I stay. He's like, I'm not going out of the game until Luca's out. And yeah, yeah. Sorry, that was yeah. a little, but I thought that no. the Jalen got a lot of like flowers for his defense, which he deserves. Mm-hmm. But the reason he got all those clippable defensive moments was because of what Jason Tatum and everyone else on the team, like, yeah, you just deal with that issue that none of us can really deal with perfectly. And will make everything else easier on the back end, so you can just laser focus on Luca or on Kyrie. Mm-hmm. Also, for sure, defensive flowers. Sam Hauser never disrespect that man again. They mm-hmm. like hunted Sam Hauser, and it didn't work. Like obviously, it was a better matchup than Jalen Brown, but it like yeah, wasn't they what they it, thought it was going to be. Yeah. I don't, yeah, it was awesome. I loved it. And that, that that was kind of a story all year long on with the Celtics. Like Sam Hauser is a guy that people always try to hunt, but he always holds up. But then when it comes down to it, it's like he's still the guy. You're hunting be a middle of the road defender instead of a guy that should have been all NBA defense. Exactly. He's a lot better than you would think he, he is like at first glance. But then it's like there's nobody else on the Celtics except for when Peyton Pritchard's in there. It's like that you would rather try to switch on to. Uh, so he just keeps getting the the card drawn for him. But um, yeah, okay. so that does it, I think, for Celtic Stock, unless you had something no, else. No, I don't. Thank you for letting me do that for a whole hour. I appreciate yeah. that. I'm glad I got it out of my system. There's uh-huh. a lot of great other things. Um, yeah. But while we're in this kind of convenient pause and break, why don't you take this moment to go get a drink, uh, go to the restroom, pause the video or stream or whatever. I don't care what you're listening on. And type in your little phone with your grubby mitts, patreon.com forward slash hoop theory. Mm-hmm. We've got a $1 tier and a $5 tier. Today, I've decided to pivot. It was going to be Fame Monster. We're actually going to be talking about chicken tariffs during the Vietnam War. That'll okay. be the Patreon episode <laughs> today. Uh, so head on over to patreon.com forward slash hoop theory or buy me a coffee. Also, hoop theory. Got to 5,000 followers on TikTok. TikTok. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Luke Beal. Mm-hmm. We, uh, the jersey has been ordered and it will be getting sent to your house once I get it. Because I didn't want to accidentally type the address in wrong and then have a, just a disaster with a jersey in a different state. And I didn't know. Uh, so I wanted it to come to my house so I could write it down and then like quadruple <laughs> check it instead of just doing yeah. that online. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It'll be coming your way. So mm-hmm. there's that. And uh, I think that's it. That was yeah. a good little break, break. Did I forget anything? I probably did. I, oh, I like, mean, comment, subscribe. subscribe. Hit the bell notification. Yeah. Give us five mm-hmm. stars because it does help. And uh, buy me a coffee. Buy me a I don't coffee. Know if you mentioned that. I think I did. Uh, oh, Probably. email. What do we have? An email. We do have an email. 
mailbag. Yeah, for mailbag. Yeah, Mail, mm-hmm. mailbag is the is it hoop, hoop theory dot mailbag. Hoop theory dot mailbag. Also, if you want to send not a question there, but want to give Logan a uh, a dad joke, you should do it. Yeah, send you him send a dad joke. Literally anything. Yeah, and if you're going, um, never mind. I'm not gonna say that. We'll read those. Well, uh, we need to be sure to read those at least next episode. I think we should do that next episode. Plan on that. Do we just want to do, do it mailbag? Now? Uh, I mean, we got a lot of, to get That's to. That's true. We do have a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, so, I, yeah, let's do mailbag next episode, though, for sure. Booking it down. But, yeah, I guess to put a bow on that Celtics thing, though, really quick, is just finals MVP. Uh, to, could could have gone either way. I don't think it's crazy for it to go to Jalen Brown, but people need to stop saying that Jalen Brown is the best player on the Celtics. I think that is still Jason Tatum pretty I mean, not not like by a ton, but I think it's like a, a fair amount. A noticeable know? gap. Yeah. But anyways, uh, back to the episode. Um, getting into that other stuff after the Celtics. The first stuff I'd like to talk about uh, is probably the... We'll touch on J.J. Redick being the head coach of the Lakers. I think yep. that's what we'll, we'll start with. And we'll go to the player moves after that. So Lakers have officially hired J.J. Redick to be their full-time head coach. Of their team, yeah. which is just nuts to me still. It is uh, bonkers as yeah. well to me. Yeah, it's just, it's a very surreal kind of feeling. It, d- it doesn't feel real. It feels kind of like a made up cartoon world that um, I shouldn't say that crazy because JJ Redick is very like, no, he was the guy that I was like, he's going to be a coach. I didn't think he would end up the coach of the Lakers. That seems. I, yeah, I also just felt like he should do some assistant coaching jobs first i just feel like that should be the way it works to be honest i don't know why i feel that way but i just feel like the usually like just hiring a player on as the head coach right away like when has that gone well can you find an example of when that's gone well there might be one but i don't know of one yeah you know what i mean like like right away that like they didn't go through like a coaching tree Um, exactly. I just feel like that's the way to, to go. You need to get yourself, you know, some experience in the, like with teams and doing, well, yeah. Isn't his but, highest level of coaching AAU basketball? Yeah, for sure. It definitely is. And is it even AAU or was he coaching AAU? I know I he's coaching he his kids. I thought it but was that's, AAU. His kids are like his son, his oldest son is like in elementary school. I'm pretty sure. Oh, well, I thought he coached AAU coaching. for some reason. Yeah, I he he I saw... might have done that also, um, but I know for sure he was his, his kid's head coach. My thing is, do we think this is wildly different if he ended up getting hired for the like Pistons job? Do you think this conversation feels different? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's definitely different. Um, I still probably would be like, oh, it's a little weird to give you know him the head coaching job right away. We've seen it happen before, but it just doesn't usually go well, so I don't know why teams keep doing it. But definitely would not be a topic to the same extent because it's the biggest brand in basketball. Like we talked about, we argued about last Mm. episode about Dan Hurley not being swayed by uh, that that allure. But honestly, like I think Lakers, yeah, and we talked about like you you had said that they're in the top three with the Celtics and the Knicks. And honestly, the more I think about it, I think the Lakers are kind of on a different level from both of those other two organizations in terms of what that title and position is because they have like the Lakers have both the best of both worlds. Like they they have what the Knicks have over the Celtics and they have what the Celtics have over the Knicks. They have the success, the Celtics piece and and they have star fan, the star power and the big, big market, like as big of a market as you could ask for. So Yeah. yeah, it's just, it's a, a wild position to be in is to be the Lakers and also just the worldwide fandom. Like the Lakers are more of a worldwide fan base more than the Knicks and the Celtics have ever been because of the reach of magic on the dream team, as well as Kobe later on. Yep. So there's, there's Lakers fans all over the place. I'm pretty sure the Philippines is the country that has the highest population of Lakers fans in the, in the world. (laughs) Everybody in the Philippines is a Lakers fan. Um, I should move to the Philippines. Just, just go to the Lions then. Yeah, just fight the good fight. That's why in the in FIBA last summer, every time Austin Reeves touched the basketball, the crowd erupted. Oh, I didn't even think of that part of it. Yeah, that's why he was the most beloved person in in 
uh, Manila. Like a riot that could have started, summer. and they would have gotten Team USA out only because Austin Reeves was there. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the yeah. crowd would have actively been like, "Stop! Don't touch them! No, get Austin out!" <laughs> That's just wild. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so JJ Redick is going to be the head coach of the Lakers. Uh, yeah. For those who don't know, he's the he's a co-host a podcast with LeBron James currently, which allegedly if, LeBron was not consulted at all. He about, said that the really? head co- the coaching hire, which I think is dumb for two reasons. One, if you're the best or second best player on a team, and you're like, "Hey, this is the guy we're going with," are you cool with that? I think mm-hmm. that's problematic. For one. And then for two, Wait, what? What do you if, mean? What's? Can you explain what's pro- problematic there? Not problematic. It just would be like, from what point of view? I don't. I'm not sure exactly what you're saying. Just from like the, you've got guys that like need to be. You need to keep happy on your team. There's a balancing act. Obviously, you don't like let their their opinion make your decision. But like, yeah. Hey, like, have you interacted with this guy before? Obviously, they knew that LeBron had, but like. Maybe there was like a secret hatred that they didn't know. This is like all hypothetical things. I still don't know which direction you're saying is problematic. Them not asking him or them asking him? Them not bringing it up to him at all. Like okay, them, so that's, not, that's yeah. the problem. I thought yeah, you sorry. worded it the opposite way around. Well, is no, what I was confused about. The opposite way, him saying they didn't talk to me at all, makes it sound like you for sure made the decision. Um, I don't know if I would say that because obviously that everybody thinks he made the decision. But then know? like immediately they're like, Anthony Davis was very influential in this decision, but they didn't talk to LeBron, but they talked to AD. Well, so yeah. you, ma- you very clearly made it a point that you were talking to players. And then if anything, JJ Redick has not been nice to AD. He's not been like as a media a talking head. He's not like Charles Barkley level mean to AD, but from like a basketball analytical standpoint, he was like, stop it, AD. Play the five. Stop it. Oh, really? I haven't even heard. I mean, I agree with him. I, yeah. But, um, I I knew about the him not putting him on his all defensive team this year. There was another was thing that a- and we talked about that because AD would be the type of guy that might care about that. About that, for sure. Um. So, But it was just weird, like, well, we can. AD was a heavy person we talked to. LeBron didn't hear a sniff of it until the hire <laughs> happened. One of these things yeah, is, it just that. doesn't make sense. Actually, I don't super doubt that because it's almost so obvious they don't even need to talk to him about it. Oh, that he would be like. You know what I mean? All- like they already know that LeBron is in JJ's corner. But it's even, almost like an unsaid thing. But the LeBron you know I mean? quote even made it sound like, uh, no, I have no idea. I didn't even know J.J. was a candidate. There's no, no. he Did he even say it like that? I don't did know he? if he I've, said it like that. That's what, like, I need to find the quote. I don't want to misattribute LeBron James yeah. like many I, people do. That would do. Be really surprise. I mean, I know LeBron stretches things sometimes and set, tells some things that are pretty obviously lies, lies, but that would really surprise me if he said that because that he has to be just not aware of anything going on. Which is just the complete opposite of how he has carried his entire career. He's always been very like media conscious or like aware of. There was no conversation between LeBron, uh, Bus, Palinka, or Rambus or anybody else when it comes to the Lakers decision makers about JJ Redick as a candidate, about Dan Hurley as a candidate, about anybody else as a candidate. So LeBron was not talked to about any of the coaches at all. Mm. And that might have been just like a thing from the very beginning of the search, him saying, just leave me. You, yeah, leave me out of it, basically. And the thing that I also, the only way that I thought that this is plausible when it was all the coaches was the Lakers are like, we're just going to try and commit to Anthony Davis in terms of like, if he's happy and sticks around, we can try to like, do we have more good years of good Anthony Davis then in theory, we do have good years of LeBron. I don't want to yeah. say LeBron's going downhill because he is. You know, we, he's been doing this a while, and he really yeah. hasn't shown. He's shown some decline, but yeah, not for as sure. much as he's, you would he's expect. In the back end of the top ten now, which is for sure lower than peak LeBron. He's was. won, no questions. Yeah, um, yeah. That'll be an exciting thing to come back to, like doing our top ten, top fifteens. 
Yeah. Because I feel like sure. this is going to be the year excited for that. where there's so many gears that have shifted. And yeah. Moved I feel like and... we're not going to line up near as well as we did last time. No. Yeah. But I'm glad we're not doing it this episode because my list would be terrible. You'd have Jason Tatum at like three? No. Or what? J- Jalen Brown would be the one that's way too high. Jason oh, Tatum. Be in the top. Jason top Tatum. 10? 11 or you 12. Have to- okay. Yeah. 11 or 12, probably. Yeah. Um, there would, I would, they, you would say Jimmy Butler. I say I take Jalen Brown. That's fair. I don't, I will, I wouldn't agree with it, but I don't think that's insane. Um, I guess maybe you'd think I would probably have Tatum at a 4A and 4B with Shea, probably. Mm, I'd, fair. I'd lean for, towards Tatum being the A and Shea being the B. Ooh. That would be a hot take, but I would still not within, not outside of the realms of I, like. I didn't reason. put him above Jokic, Luka, or Giannis, so I feel like that's that's a step towards. You had reasonable. him over Luka. You had him. You had him over Luka last year, so that would be a. Well, Luka, I also think like did it again. Definitely vaulted. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. For sure. I, yeah. Okay. Cool. I mean, I thought it was kind of crazy for that people last year were putting Tatum over Luca. It wasn't just a you thing. That was like a thing going on. I yeah. th- and I, I vocally said that I thought that was a little nutty, but um, not not to the point that I'm like take your basketball card away, obviously. But I just thought like I, I really don't feel like I can't I can't get myself there personally, if that makes sense. Um, so, I do every single day when I wake up. Get yourself at- there. Get myself to thinking that Jason Tatum's the best player on the planet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dang it. It's I, not the right yeah. background, but this is my background right now. It's the block that they said was a foul on uh, PJ Washington. Yeah. Um, also, I funny sent something. The out, Earlier this year, not, not that long ago, actually, towards the end of the year, it was when you re- reached your peak delusion yeah. <laughs> level with Jason Tatum. Uh, I just wanted to call back to this episode. I think it was like, oh man, I think it was around the Bill Walton episode so in the 70s, okay. like 74, 75. But it's when you when said I was, that. When I, I was, was I getting mad about the media and how they were treating Jason Tatum? We were talking about the future of the face of the league. And you were saying that that Jason Tatum needs to be considered uh, for one of the GOAT candidates. Like, so, like one of the people that could possibly become... Era. No, no, no! You were you were saying <laughs> that I'm not even kidding. Was I you drunk? were like, "What the? Was I, I know, drinking?" I, like, listen, I, literally the next episode after that, I was like, "How? How did he say this?" But yeah, I, and I be, didn't even I, react that strongly. I was just kind of like, like, "I didn't." I like chose peace. I feel like it's probably what it was. Well, no, because I think if you would have like attacked me, I would have like immediately been like, "Wait, yeah, I need but, to, it, I need to fix this going on right now." Yeah, I. You said, I said, you think that Jason Tatum needs to be considered as a real like goat candidate. And you, and you said, and you, I'm pretty sure you said kind of, sort of, yeah. Probably. <laughs> no, pretty I was sure prob- that was the line. It's probably because I was in like Tatum defense mode, which, yeah. hey, Luca fans, sucks to be you. Welcome to defense mode until your superstar wins a title. It's annoying and it sucks and you have to do it for literally years. Mm-hmm. I wish you the best of luck, and I will not be squandering Luca's talents as a basketball player, and because I'm not going to add fuel to the fire that I once had to walk through. And honestly, weirdly enough, even though Tatum just won his first ring, I feel like the Tatum slander as is at an all time high right now. Yeah. So that's, I'm that's walking out the haters with pictures of the Larry O'Brien. And yeah. Peyton Pritchard buzzer beater videos. That's like, I'm just blocking out all anti-Celtics propaganda with that mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. And then, Anyways, we need to yeah. get back off the Celtics. I don't know how we got back on the Celtics. But J- uh, JJ Redick, Lakers head coach. I think it's going to be funny if, like, you know, things crash and burn again uh, with the Lakers. I think Not when, really crash and burn, but just, like, we don't. I think when things don't go well. Yeah, they they don't reach the lofty expectations that they are unreasonable, you know, for them. The only um, way that like the Lakers for me, this makes sense is if they're like, we're not going to be firing J.J. Redick unless he's like, we're going to let him have growing pains. Like, that's the only way that this hire in yeah. any universe makes sense to me, because I do think that J.J. Redick has the 
like capability Chops. to turn into something like for sure terrifying, like a a Spolstra level, like ooh, like I think he has the ability to be that good of a coach. So like maybe the best coach ever. Yeah, like I'm not even yeah. I, I I think that he has the willingness to like look at new things, which I think great coaches have. But he also has like. I guess I've never seen his like coaching, like what what he sends out there in terms of like what offenses he runs and. But you, yeah, you, I, you think his X's and O's background, he has enough. Just it'll work. I think he'll have more than Steve Nash did of the like. Not everyone is just a weird basketball computer. Yeah, and he fits the mold of the the type of players that do become really good coaches are the players that aren't stars, players yes. that are like they're good. Smart long basketball players, journeyman. long yep. career journeyman, more than like mm-hmm. the yeah exactly because they re- they can relate to everybody on the team yeah and they know how to get Deal in the with, head and get yeah. in the mind of all those players they know what they're experiencing more so my, than the stars would my favorite video was when uh like of somebody making fun of the hire was like JJ Redick when the uh, Lakers open a half like zero for nine from three point land. And he's just is like just it's like a like a deep fake of JJ Reddick just like breaking clipboards and being like it's not that hard it's a catch and shoot three just put it in yeah because because <laughs> that's like just what he did like he was the guy that was like we can't hit <laughs> JJ Reddick will hit a three it'll be fine mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah. yeah it's also so weird to think that he was in the league not very long ago it's like four years it has not been that long yeah like there's a picture te- of- he was teammates with he was teammates with Luca yeah. On the on the Mavs and Zion on the Pelicans, yeah, wild, yeah, and Drew on the Pelicans. That that feels like that was a while ago now. Honestly, that Drew was on the Pelicans, but that was his first year on the Pelicans. That was JJ's first year on the Pelicans. I'm pretty sure. Was when he they crossed over? Was JJ Redick there when AD was there for a year? No, it was the was season it, after it, AD. It was left. the cro- okay. Because it was it was Drew's last season there was JJ's first season there. It was like a big part of the reason JJ signed there was because he wanted to finally be teammates with Drew. He was one of the guys that he always wanted, wanted to be teammates, but he never was. And so finally they were teammates with each other. And then Drew got traded uh, after either after that season. I'm pretty sure yeah, he was an offseason trade, I want to say, to the Bucks. Yeah, definitely was. But yeah, that was the bubble year that yep. they were teammates on the Pelicans. Oh, because I remember JJ Redick was pissed in the bubble because he's like i have never not been a winner yeah yeah because they didn't make the playoffs and then he was like zion was these out. guys don't care and that was zion's it. rookie year i remember this very vividly now because like people went to like a weird extreme to find like the last time jj reddick didn't make postseason because didn't he oh, have something even before like it was college like, it was saying. like before high school like they like yeah. went into like weird depth. It definitely wasn't in the NBA, that's for sure. Yeah. Because yeah. that was his first year in the NBA. He was not in the playoffs, right? Yeah. It was his 16th year in the year in the league, I think. Some or 13th year in the league, something like that. And it was his first time not being in the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. That's nuts. I think I think that if the Lakers are approaching this with the right mindset of accepting growing pains with JJ Reddick, they have done a very good thing. I agree. They've gotten ahead of things. Because I think that he would have sat in as assistant coach for two years, and then GMs would have been like, oh, he's going to be insanely good. We should have done this earlier, and the Lakers just yeah, did it because be the they case. can. Um, mm-hmm. I And I might be wrong on this one, but I, I think that J.J. Redick will go down as a insanely good coach with a very illustrious coaching career. Like He will be remembered as a coach more than a player when it's like at the end, is my thought. Could be, yeah. It's always like hard a to tell. Doc Rivers situation where, like, you know, obviously we watch JJ Redick play. We will definitely remember him as a player. But like our children oh, yeah. will be like, "Oh, I didn't realize JJ Redick played. That's cool." Yeah. Like how so when you first yeah. find out that Doc Rivers played, or whenever Sam Cassell eventually becomes a coach, which I'm, it's it's getting close. I don't know if that'll ever happen. <laughs> you don't think but, so? Or maybe event. I mean, he's getting pretty old, isn't he? And he's been an assistant for like twenty five years at least. I thought he was a player on the. Oh eight team. Sam Cassell. I didn't say anything. I got my wires crossed. I'm sorry. Don't talk to me. I'm stupid. Yeah, I'm wrong. Okay. I'm definitely wrong. I'm sorry. 
He might have been, I guess, but I, I might be a little bit thrown off by his time. I know he played in the 2000s a little bit. So I guess he 25 was, he, years is. He was, I know he was around for 08. I want, I'm As almost, a okay, no, I'm going to back this up. I think he was yeah, a player. You, you might be right. Yeah. I think I, I'm the one who's overselling how old he is. Cause, because he's 54. Yeah. So he's not that old for a coach at all. So, yeah, he could definitely be a head coach. Yeah, I, I totally back up the train. He was drafted in 93. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so definitely yeah, he, around. I knew that he, he was, was on or around the 08 Celtics team. I was thought it was a player. It is a player. It is as a player. He's a three-time champ, so I'm guessing he had to be. He was on the 04 Pistons. Um, or no, he was on the 04 wolves so how does he have three rings Who Rock, he- two rockets two rockets rings when mj was gone oh yeah you're right when he was very young yep and he but he was a contributor for sure uh so he has the two rockets years his first and second year in the nba and then boston and 08 was his last season in the nba he played 17 games for the boston celtics all right glad we got that figured out but yeah, so he could definitely become a head coach. I know he's been in the rumors for being a head coach for years now. Oh, so you're so. going to dodge it again? Shame on you. Yeah, I know. I don't Shame. get how... There's- he, yeah, I, when I mentioned the other year or the other episode that like what teams he uh, interviewed for, I forgot yeah. to mention he did interview for the Lakers job also. Oh, he did? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Also, am I missing something? Why is someone... James... Uh, Borrego. Borrego. <laughs> I almost said it again. Um, yeah. Why is he not jobbed? Why is he not a coach somewhere? I don't know why he was fired from okay. Charlotte. So I'm not the only one. It confuses me. No, both of us hated that when it happened. Yeah. Well, and I, I think the only thing that makes sense to me is if like Lamelo hated them, and they're like, "Well, this is." I don't the even best think that thing. he did though. No, I, I know. Think. I just don't know what, like, why and how. Yeah, I don't know why they would fire their coach that was pretty good, like a a. Nothing wrong with him at all. And was like a pretty innovative young head coach. And they fired him and replaced him with their ex head coach that like is terrible with young teams. Like he he squeezes every last win out of them and plays Kem Birch over like you'll play Kem Birch 35 minutes a game over your lottery pick, you know. For yeah. four seasons in a row, he'll never. That guy will never get a chance because Ken Birch and Mason Plumley are going to be squeezing out wins for you. That Steve Clifford is this head coach that does that. I don't know why the Hornets were like, "Oh yeah, let's get Steve Clifford back here. Let's fire James Borrego, get Steve Clifford back." It doesn't make sense. But they to did, me. Um, and he doesn't have a job again, which is also confusing. But Borrego has been the assistant with New Orleans uh, at least this season. I don't know where he was before that. But, but uh, I feel he's like- with Willie Green right now, and he's like the associate head coach. Like he's a oh, like a pretty involved. He might like his role. But yeah, no, he definitely yeah. applies for other jobs, and interviews for him. I'd like to see him get the Cavs for head job. coach for head coach for head yeah, coaches. He yes, yeah, I would like to see mm-hmm. him get the Cavaliers job personally. I think that would be a good. I agree. Fit. I th- I think that would be really good, honestly. Also, the dream is potentially bubbling up to tr- to, to reality. Probably not now that they got Caruso, but the cat to the Pelicans and then uh, Ingram to the yeah. Cavs. Cavs. No. And D- Garland to the Wolves. Yeah, I was three adding OKC trade. into that three team trade for some reason, and that's just incorrect. But Brandon Ingram will be traded, essentially, is what reports are saying. Yeah. Uh, do we mm-hmm. want to move into that now, or we got more coaching subtitles? I think about? we can. Yeah. We can um, move into the. So there has been one trade that I know has happened. There's yeah, officially before we started recording at least there is only one transaction that is officially taking place. And that is the most wild weird 2K swap that you've ever seen. Yep. Player for but it's player. Perfect. Alex Caruso is now a member of the Thunder again. He never was before. Summer You're League. Thinking of Alex Abrinas maybe? Nope. Summer League. Oh, was he? There was Alex was Caruso really? with hair wearing an OKC jersey. Oh, really? Okay. I didn't realize that. I'll make sure. I'm pretty sure it's Summer League. Yeah, you're probably right then. It, um, 
It was he was wearing twenty five. Because he was undrafted, he didn't go straight to the Lakers. But that was the first NBA team that he he played for and was signed to, I think, for like a full time contract. But yeah, Alex Crusoe is on the Thunder, and Josh Giddy has been traded to the Chicago Bulls. So definitely a more you know um, rebuilding type of move for the Bulls, which is you know it's been a long time coming for them to finally start to rebuild. But they still have a lot of moves to make. If they are going full rebuild, because they still have DeRozan, they still have Zach Levine. Um, Which is also have, seems like Zach Levine is also going to be going. At the very least, that will be like the next th- guy for sure. This year seems stronger than the previous four years where he's been in the trade rumors. Especially this, since they just traded for Josh Giddey. Yeah, yeah though this especially. this year feels like the like, okay, Zach Levine will be wearing something else. Mm-hmm. What about another reunion? Zach Levine to the T-Wolves? Just kidding. That'd be pointless and useless and not good for anybody. Eh, I mean, it wouldn't be terrible, but it would Cap also not wise, be Cap-wise, it would be not worth it. For what? Cap-wise, it would not be worth oh. it, I don't think. For who? The Thunder. The T-Wolves. Well, you're trading for Cat, though, right? Is... Yeah, like, I don't think that I would want to do that, probably. Oh. I mean, I think it's an upgrade, but it's definitely not your first choice. For no, I think the, the, the first choice to upgrade, uh, as we've alluded to, is a a ball handling point guard type of guy. Yeah, which Zach Levine can do bits of, but he definitely is more of an ant than yeah. Mike Conley. I think if you're giving up Cat, you would like to get a guy that does that and can do other things, as yeah. opposed to the other way around. Exactly. Prefer- yeah, preferably. That's for sure. Um. But Caruso, yeah, is on the Thunder. Giddy is on the Bulls. Um, the Thunder have this is a huge upgrade because now they have a guy that, that like they had a carousel of options to put in at their two. They could never really land on a what what five man lineup works the best because uh, they I mean they they had the solidified four guys of Shea at the one, Jalen Williams at the four, Chet at the five. Um, the door, Lou door at the three, at the three, and then the two spot was Giddy most of the time, just as like a default. And then, and then they tried Joe. to start switching it to Isaiah Joe for the shooting, and then they had Casey Wallace for the defense in the backcourt, and then uh, Aaron Wiggins was kind of like a all-in-one kind of option, like but, a little bit of everything, but a little bit worse um, than everybody else at it, just good enough at all of it. Um, but that's yeah. just now going to be Alex Caruso. Yeah, if it's not for sure. Fire Daglenut for sure. I said it wrong. <laughs> yeah. If, they, also, if he just is like, I'm going to put Carson Wall. I'm going to start Carson Wallace instead of Alex Caruso. I want his Kaysen. energy off the bench. Case and Wallace. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's not. I, can, I don't need to correct you every time. Just tell me if you want me to actually correct you or not. Do I say it wrong like every time? No, I'm like just in general oh. on names. No, it's okay. You what I'm can. saying. You probably okay. should. I say you, the you wrong name to? a lot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just don't want to be like, if you don't like it, that I do that. Like, I don't want to just keep doing it over Is Cason Wallace a human? Cason is his name. Is Carson Wallace a human? <laughs> you did that the other other episode when you, out of nowhere, you were like, Mikhail Wilbon. And then I was like, <laughs> Mikhail? And then you were like, uh, you were like, Michael? Is it, isn't it Michael? Is it Mikhail? You thought that I was telling you it was Mikhail. I was like, no, you said Mikhail. <laughs> oh, I'm bad I, I, I want to make that I want to make that one a clip really bad. The <laughs> Mikhail Wilbon one. Uh, but um anyways, back to the Thunder. Yeah. Degnall, I think he his coaching position is one of the most secured, I think. I was in the saying NBA. that is that would be a very but, dumb basketball thing to do to not start Alex Caruso. I don't know. Maybe I could see like the cause Casey Wallace is really good. And Crusoe has been like a lifetime off the bench guy, basically, for the most part. Um, yeah, but like he's been he's like a sixth man. Like Crusoe plays like six man minutes usually, like twenty high twenties. He's never yeah. cracked thirty for an average on his season. I but, still um, think that I would prefer Caruso for sure, but I still think that there's a world in which you're the like, value oh, maybe of having like a really strong piece to kind of run your second unit a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There um, could be something there, but I feel like the obvious choice though is Crusoe at the two in the starting lineup. 
Uh, I think that fits pretty perfectly, to be honest. Uh, and does he gives everything them that they... a little bit of three-point shooting. Yep. He gives them the defense. Defense out the wazoo. More than what they had, uh, which is saying something. Um, yeah, <laughs> insanely. <laughs> um, they might be the one of the best. They might be like on the Wolves type of level defense next season. Yeah. With Chet holding down the five. No, it's going to be gross. Jaylen, they got Jalen Williams, <laughs> Lou Dort, and Alex Crusoe as their win. And then win. Shea's defense has improved. Yeah, I mean, he's, no, it's improving. he's not a bad defensive player at all. No, he yeah, wasn't he's, just because of the physical or the um, athleticism he has. But, like, I feel like his defense has, like, gotten better. Like, that's what has improved Yeah, slowly in the background. Anyway, it, they're going to be a problem. It's going to be gross and gross. Gross, gross, yeah. gross. Mm-hmm, for um, sure. And then, uh, so the, definitely an improvement. I think the Thunder are are like three. Not th- They're definitely like a decent amount more sc- scary heading into this season. than la- Last year, it was like heading into the year. is like, oh, fun. Maybe they're a team that could make some noise. That's like, you know, and then they surprised everybody and were the number one seed. Did they surprise me? Um, then one seed, yes. I mean, you, yeah, you guess them as the three seed, I'm pretty sure, in our our preseason okay which which i thought was not like wild you know okay but i'm um, also going to say that it's like essentially a coin flip for them to be the three seed because it was within everybody was within a game oh, wasn't yeah. it yeah yeah like i mean they were tied with they were tied with um denver and then minnesota was behind by one game yeah so i will i'm going yeah i was i was not as low on them as some but i was also probably not as high on them as some were no, you were as high as anybody was. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize that. What do you mean? They I didn't realize that I was seed? that much higher than other people. I don't pay attention to other people. Nobody else had them that high? Not even close. Oh. Not hey. really. I mean, there were, there were like the group of people that were the highest on OKC is that that's where they had them. You was, know what I mean? Yeah. It was yeah, like yeah, the yeah. three seed. But yeah. most people, like the average opinion on the Thunder heading into the year was like, the literally middle of the road and be like the 15th ranked team in the NBA. If not, maybe a tiny bit lower, like 16, 17. Oh yeah. I would, I didn't do that at all. Yeah. You had them like top 10. And when we did like our, I did early in the very, season. I remember that. Yeah. One. It was like ninth or 10th or something like that. I'll st- yeah. And you were, you were definitely right at the minimum. <laughs> you were, you were correct at the minimum. <laughs> <laughs> it's how correct is the nitty gritty, but we don't need to get into the nitty gritty um, because yeah. we're moving on ish kind of sort of. Uh, well, yeah, looking at the bull, like I we started to go into the Bulls a little bit, but I do want to kind of touch on them. Is Josh Giddy on this Bulls team? Uh, who knows what the, this roster is going to look like heading into the year? I uh, because I would wager it probably looked at least significant, like a lot different. <laughs> um, because I think a Levine trade is bound to happen. Um, if not then we're at least going to get like DeRozan or Vucevic or Vucevic rather. And Lonzo ball is a guy that I think is probably going to be moved. Like, I just think that if they don't go blow up mode right now, then I think they're again, making another mistake and the same mistake they have been making last several years and just not doing it. Finally, the Mars is going to end up in LA, right? He's finally going to end up home. Uh, That would be the best storybook ending, I guess, but who knows who, who will need, DeMar DeRozan, maybe, maybe it depends on where Paul George ends up is maybe where we see Very DeRozan true. gets moved in place of him or in lieu of Paul George, if that's what that means. I think that's what that means. Oh, if DeMar DeRozan ends up on the Sixers, I'm going to be a little bit upset. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. You'd be upset? Yeah, that I, I wouldn't love that. Yeah, I think that would be kind of a good fit. I like DeMar DeRozan. I don't want any reason to not. <laughs> yeah. That would that would be a good fit for sure. Um, Cleveland, maybe if the Ingram trade de- tra- trade does not happen to Cleveland, yeah, that would be pretty crazy. This team has to get blown up. It has to. They have to be the giving Bulls, up for sure. They have mm-hmm. to. There's no universe where they don't. Yeah, there's just so many guys on this team that they could get something lots of for re- now and yeah. could get nothing for in 365 days. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I agree. And one of those guys, like I've mentioned, Alonzo Ball, I have i don't know if you've seen this at all, but on Nuggets Twitter, there's been a lot of five-man lineups being you know, photoshopped mm-hmm. of Jamal Murray, Alonzo Ball, MPJ, Aaron Gordon, and Nicole Jokic. 
What about MPJ for Bogdan? Jokic's best friend, good old buddy, old pal. That I've I saw that a while ago. I'm not sure if I. Oh no, is that I'm not like saying a, that that's a thing that I've seen. I'm just like, oh, what? How do you feel about that one? Obviously, you lose your beloved MPJ, but the, yeah. the chemistry. I I uh, don't get me wrong. I've always wanted Bogdan Bogdanovich on Jokic's the team. Nuggets, yeah. I and I'm I like Bogdan from just like a Fit basketball standpoint yeah. in general. Yeah, just wh- wherever he's been, I've always cheered for him, and I I like his game. I think he's really underrated. Um. But for MPJ, I feel like we would need to get... It wouldn't be straight up. I'm just saying you lose the asset of MPJ and then more because you're giving up... Sorry. You give up MPJ and you get... Get And more. more. Yeah. Draft capital, I would think. Probably. Probably. Because, I mean, well, contract-wise, we would need to actually get more, probably. Because unless... Well, never mind, because we're so far into the... um, uh, luxury tax. What's it called? The second Se- bracket, second second level apron, second, second, second apron. apron that we uh, could probably use a salary dump. So that could actually work out, honestly. But yeah, I don't hate that one for sure. I don't think that's a massive upgrade necessarily. But I don't hate that one at all. I think we're still we're, we're not any worse. You know, if we make that trade, I'll put it that way. Um, but I think we are giving up a little bit of, you know, value there with, with Michael Porter Jr. trading off of him. But the trade that I, I really do like though is, is, I mean, KCP love what he's done in Denver. He was love in that rumors, he, wasn't he? I'm not, well, I guess I don't know if he would be a part of the trade. He might be. If you were to get trade for Alonzo Ball, I'm sure KCP would probably have to be, not necessarily have to be, but he would be one of the options. For the oh, fake the trade. Lakers are interested in KCP again. That's what I saw. That would make sense. Yeah, I don't know why they ever gave him up to begin with. Very to get Russell barren. Westbrook. But, um, yeah, <laughs> which is just nuts. But yeah, I think that I would hate to see KCP go there, just for, as a from a Nuggets fan perspective. Like that's the one team I would hate for him to go to the most. Yeah. Um, but obviously basketball wise, it makes a lot of sense and they could really use Contavious Caldwell Pope there in LA, but getting Lonzo though on this team with the Nuggets, I just feel like that would be such a perfect fit if Lonzo is healthy. And that's a big if, you know, cause he's not played basketball in like three years. Yeah. That's wild. Lonzo ball. Yeah. That's nuts. It uh-huh. has almost been three years. Yeah, it's pretty wild. But I th- theoretically, though, him on the Nuggets provides a, a ball handler, somebody that can like be more of a point guard that's not just Jamal Murray, and which I think is just a huge add. That would add so much. Like Really, the, the main missing piece in that starting five would be another guy that can be a very heavy minutes, heavy duty ball handler. That can handle um, big bot. Like they can deal with the 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 what the wolves threw at you and it like yes. not care as bad as jamal or be the or one just that's... or just give more it's a pressure release valve yes, for jamal another even option if, even if lonzo's the one that gets it from over the half court line and then throws it to jamal just mm-hmm. to like keep jamal from getting hounded from uh, exactly baseline to midcourt Yep, and then it gives us another guy who can find Jokic as well as anybody can, like in the pick and roll, because Alonzo Ball's that level of passer. Yep. Um, and then he's just he's a good three and D guard. Yeah. On top of that, and he's got good size for that position too. He's six six. It's just like such a perfect fit. But the key is is it like him being healthy, which we just don't know if that's going to be a thing or not. A possibility, even. Yeah. Well, it sounds like that's a possibility. It, d- it does sound like he's. He says he's ready to go now. He's been cleared <clears throat> to play once again, but you just never no. know with these injury riddled uh, guys. No, that's what I mean is the the possibility of him staying healthy as the opposed to being healthy now. Like the mm. the ability to stay healthy is the the biggest question mark because after you have a couple injury riddled things in a row, it can become difficult. Yeah, for sure. It was kind of like the Bill Walton situation, I think with like the first year that he lost was basically a wasted year because they didn't even know what his issue was 
medically for that oh. entire first season. They thought it, it was like a misdiagnosis. It was like a they were treating him for something else, basically. And then later it was realized that this other weird, random, very rare thing was the actual issue. And then they were able to start to get to work on like, yeah, he had surgery for that. So hmm. it was like a whole year kind of wasted of them not knowing what the actual issue was. Uh, and that, that was basically the same exact thing that happened with Bill Walton and the Blazers. And the reason he sued the Blazers and left was because of that same type of situation where it was a misdiagnosis the first season of him being out. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I just like the idea of Lonzo on the Nuggets. Nothing else to add there. Paul George is a big name that I think is going to be interesting to see where he ends up. Um, I think the leading candidate should probably be the Clippers, to be honest. I think a lot of people are expecting him not to go back to the Clippers, but um, I think that's a pretty likely, not li- li- not like it's like overwhelmingly likely, but like at least 50-50, you know, that Lonzo's of him a staying with. Oh, staying. Okay. That Paul George is staying with the Clippers. Yeah, I moved, we moved, I moved on from Lonzo. I'm talking about Paul George now. How did I miss that? My brain just like turned yeah, off. I think you were just you were reading something, but it's I'm fine. sorry. <laughs> I use no, I usually am listening and reading. I missed yeah. the pivot. I'm very sorry, sir. No, yeah, I'm no, locked right. in now. I this <clears throat> isn't relevant, the thing that I was looking at. <laughs> Paul George is a is just a big name that I feel like is going to <clears throat> kind like of sway the, a lot of things this offseason. Because it the dominoes of him staying will change who the Sixers are looking at, because I feel like that's the most like thrown around fit Sixers, Sixers Mavericks is a big one also, which I think that would be insane. <laughs> oh, that would uh, make the West even crazier at the top. Yeah, would make the it's so crowded at the very top. You know. Yeah, like the top four teams in the West then would just be like outs. Yeah, that would be gross. All of them would be like competing with Celtics for the top of the East. All four of those teams you know what i mean for sure and but like the celtics are the only team in the yeah. east that they would have to compete with um so unless the sixers have like a full healthy season which who knows but yeah because they they were they literally were that until Embiid got hurt the sixers mm-hmm. this year were like a worthy competitor for boston up until that point because i think when Embiid played they split it one and one i believe oh head to head mm-hmm yeah, but, but record for, wise, they were they were like oh, a top. Yes, record wise, two. it was close. They might have been the one seed for a little bit, but not at the point that Embiid got hurt, though. I want to say sure. the Celtics had the one seed at that point, almost entirely. Like outside yeah. of like the early weeks, like obviously you like lose because yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure the 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 um. Well, no, because Boston was the last team to lose a game, weren't they? They They're the were. first team, the last yeah, the last team to yes, lose. One they game. were so that. Yeah, they were definitely won the whole year then. Unless I'm thinking of they were just the... I know for a fact that they were the last team to hit 10 losses. I know that for a fact, but I might be... Because the Celtics were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 0, oh, and then lost to the T-Wolves in overtime. And then Okay, lost... so they probably weren't the last team then. They could have been, but... No, I think they were. 5-0 and oh got I think that? this year was crazy, or 6-0, and oh, I can't count. It was five and zero. Oh. I know. I think that this year was like crazy early, like okay. everyone lost pretty early. Mm. Um, and then they there lost. wasn't anybody tied with that though. Five. Uh, I will check. Yeah, but so yeah, the Sixers might have not ever had the one seed. For some reason, I thought they did at one point. I thought they were like ten and one or something like that, and had the one seed. They might have because the early they got the Celtics had two losses, and then there wasn't very many losses in a row after that. Okay, so maybe yeah, because they lost to the they had on the road at Minnesota and then at Philly, and uh, the Sixers won by three, and then the Celtics mm. beat Philly, so it would have had to have been before November fifteenth. Okay, yeah, on as of November twelfth and thirteenth, they were eight and one, and the, the Celtics Sixers would have been nine and two. Okay, so that does put the Sixers in first then. But so yeah, but very inconsequential, you know, first seed. But that was a, at least they had it. Yeah, they, they did. had it for a little bit. 
anyways, the Paul George is what we should be talking about. Dallas Mavericks and the the Philadelphia 76ers are two big ones. The Orlando Magic is the other big one that I've seen thrown out thrown around quite a bit. Is Paul George going to the Orlando Magic? Which I think would be interesting. I don't think it's as scary as the other ones. But I don't know. That one that one does kind of make me feel a certain type of way a little bit. You you think so? Because it gives them the piece that like the one thing that I feel like they don't have is like the the like the veteran like like veteran presence. like star star that's the like they they have all this like young stardom stuff but they just yeah. don't like i feel like paul george also Joe paul is like george the only... would be able to pull them out of the i didn't like, think about that joe ingle that's like the biggest one of the biggest rivalries in the nba the modern nba is paul george and joe ingles i don't know if they would be able to do that <laughs> Um, I, I was more also thinking is Paul George is good enough offensively that like when the Magic's offense just stops working sometimes like yeah it just does Paul Pull George would be like let's go guys let's get some buckets give me the ball I only need like five minutes I might miss a lot of shots but I'll also make a lot yeah. so give me a half a quarter I'll cook and then yeah. we'll get the ball rolling again and he can fit in with any team pretty perfectly, Paul George can. That's why he's kind of like the archetype of the modern wing. Uh, yep. Everybody cites him as like the who they're modeling their game after. Their goat. Yeah, and that also. <laughs> um, but because, you know, he can play off, off the ball, stretch the floor, and he can do basically anything you would want with the ball in his hands as well. So he's just he can sw- uh, turn that switch on and off and play alongside Paulo Bancaro, honestly, would be a... A uh, really good fit. The only thing I don't love about it is be- is that you know the Magic are already so wing heavy, like everybody is so big and a wing <laughs> on their team that he's just like another one thrown in there. But other than that, though, I think it's works pretty well. But I, I would definitely put it third though behind the Sixers fit and the the Mavericks fit. Which I probably I put think Mavericks, the Mavericks one. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. The Mavericks yeah. fit is way scarier in my brain. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That that would be honestly. That would be and nuts. if you're the Clippers, I feel like you kind of are okay with that. Like Meaning... out of all of the replacements you could get back, what the Mavericks would give you. It would probably be... Um, well, th- Paul George is a free agent this summer. I assume for sign and trade is my thought. Um, okay. Just for the money. Which it might be. Just so he can still get paid. This was my thought, but... <clears throat> well, the Ma- I think the Mavericks is... Aren't they... They might be able to sign him is the thing. Or just straight up sign him and not even care. I might be wrong on that, but I feel like... The amount I've heard people talk about the Mavericks, I would just assume that they could. They do. Yep. They have, they have $52 million of cap space. So like literally perfect. Wow. Like literally a max contract worth of cap space. Wow. (laughs) Pretty perfectly. So that is pretty wild. They also need to trade Tim on an unrelated note. They need to get rid of Tim Hardaway. That guy's a 17 or $16 million rock. (laughs) With the, why with, why the Tim Hardaway hate? Because <laughs> I just looked at the roster, and he's the third highest paid player on the team. Yeah, it's just last last, week, last uh, episode you said the way you started the Tim Hardaway, your Tim Hardaway little topic or whatever. Because was, I just witnessed him go five for six for no reason. Uh, yeah, no, okay, I'm thinking of the Mikhail Wilbon episode. So that was two episodes ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was like two episodes ago. Oh, the Mikhail Wilbon episode it, in your well, brain. That, well, because that, that was literally oh, the same exact Because he said that the guy that needs to step That's up. That's why you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. you said, you said, speaking of, what did you say? Speaking of something, and you said something like players who, oh, uh, veteran minimums. You said, speaking of vet minimums, <laughs> did you see what Mikhail Wilbon said? And like you started, you, you were teeing up. Talking about Tim Hardaway Jr. Um, so you were saying that he, you know. Is, but, in my brain, that's what he is worth. 
Yeah. Um, which I, I'm not saying that that's necessarily that far from the truth, but, he, but I, I just was like, I, I, I just felt like the out of nowhere, Tim Hardaway, <laughs> like you were saying that he doesn't deserve to play. It was wild that uh, Michael Wilbon was saying that he could be like the X factor if he got more minutes or whatever, could sway a game if he came in. And he did sway a game. It just was in garbage time. And it was. Well, I'm not saying that you were proved wrong. I'm but, just yeah. saying that I was. I thought that was a little like Tim Hardaway has made. He has. He's had some big games, and it's and and he's not like past his prime. Really, he's 32. He's like on the back end a little bit, but yeah. he's still really. I mean, he's just not shot well for this also, little stretch. He had a contract where he made mo- more at the beginning, and it got worse. Yeah, but, it's a. Uh, yeah, that happens, especially with players that are. At his age, that's just how it's a, how it went. It's not it's not super common, but it definitely okay. happened. Like Al Horford's contract, I believe, does that. Uh, Ricky Rubio's last deal was doing that. I think Sergi Baca, he signed a deal toward the end like that. But uh, I can't remember what they call it. It's a dec- not declining, but a something something contract. You know that does that. It. Uh, declines in in the it is a declining amount. contract is that the word i thought it's nope. with an f that's an but. ibm website front loaded yeah something like that i think front loaded or um any anyway, yeah but descending descending that is the word it doesn't start with an f but it is descending well, descending yep. slash front loaded is what i had found okay I, yeah descending contract is what i was looking for in my mind but yeah, so I guess moving on from that stuff, though, we're at the end, honestly. Yeah. I think that is the end of this episode. So we're moving on to the end. Um, thank you guys for listening. We really appreciate you. Uh, like, subscribe, follow the feed, rate the show, please, on Spotify. We need more ratings. We have like four or five or something like that. We need more Spotify ratings. Ramp them up. Get to 15, please. Get to 15. <laughs> um, and. Uh, buy me a coffee uh, dot com slash hoop theory do that and uh you know patreon something we're gonna be doing right here right now probably i think yeah, right for sure i'm ready okay go check that out we'll have it up around the time this episode drops hopefully if you haven't checked out the other one yet the menards lore that was a hoot and a half go check out that video that's up on the patreon uh, but yeah, this is going to be a at least semi regular thing that we're doing jacob's committing to every episode i don't I'm not going to uphold him to that necessarily if people sign up for patreon.com i will yeah so the more of you sign up the more he's going to do it that you're going to throw money at him he's going to dance that's that's the way it works daily i just have to do it daily just give him a like a five minute (laughs) lesson on just random stuff yeah it'll just end up you'll be like a streamer basically yeah wow yeah but uh yeah so love you we appreciate you stay happy stay healthy we'll talk to you guys next episode peace